So these uh, pieces of 3-inch PVC coming straight up are teed off of our equalization pipes. And what these are are observation pipes. We can look down into these and see what the water level is. That's important because right now it's pretty obvious where the water level is because we can look down into the planter and see it right there. But when we get to a later stage, when we get all our gravel in, we don't see the water in. So, to see the water level, which is important to know, how much water is in the planter at all times, we can just look down these pipes, which are going to stick a few inches out of the planter, out of the ground. We're going to cut these down, and then they're going to be capped. And we can just take that cap off and look down to see how much water we have. Uh, that's, that, so that's what the use is for the 3-inch pipes. The 6-inch pipes serve that same purpose, but they also are big enough to fit submersible pumps down into. So. What I have here, I'm going to have a 24-volt a uh, DC submersible pump that pumps water up to my, my, uh, my SureFlow pump that's going to pump water back to the toilet. And in this guy, I'm actually going to have two pumps. One is uh, the same submersible pump to recirculate water throughout the, uh, the great water planter. It's going to recirculate water back to the reception cell. So during the day when the sun's out, going to use excess power that I have just to circulate the water so it doesn't grow stagnant. Um, I'm going to put a second submersible pump in here to act as a circulation recirc pump as well, but it's going to be an aeration circuit recirculation pump where I'm going to have like a fountain set up on top of the planter with some rocks and the water that, that gets pumped out of the bottom of the planter is going to go up and it's just going to trickle down on top of rocks back into the planter and uh, also top water in the process, top water whatever vegetation is in this area. And that is going to help. Uh, 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 that's going to help inhibit uh, like bacteria growth and algae and whatever else could grow in that planter um, with stagnant water at the bottom. All right, so I have the submersible pump all done inside there for the uh, recirc, and I got the hose just with a uh, three-quarter inch to half inch PEX fitting. I don't know if it's really meant for this, but I just clamped that three quarter inch in inside dimension uh, hose right here to the to the, crimp, the PEX crimp side of the brass fitting. There's a half inch PEX crimp on this side, and this PEX hose goes all the way down. It's gonna go inside the planter, all the way down to where Glenn is holding it, where it's gonna go back into the reception cell to recirculate the water in the gray water cell, uh, planter. So. I have a 60 minute timer on here, wired up, and I'm going to turn the turn this to turn it on, and you can hear it going, and there goes the water. So I'm installing my uh, bilge pumps, my submersible bilge pumps, uh, down in these two six inch observation tubes. On the gray water planter, these tubes go down to the bottom of the, the planter and they double as observation tubes with being able to see the water level of the planter and also as a po access points where I can drop my submersible pumps for the recirculation of the gray water planter. And also, I already have a pump installed in this guy right here. This is the pump that primes this pump, which then pumps water through this filter and then out to the toilet uh, where it's then. Uh, flush down and use black water. So I'm, I just uh, set this guy up. We're using, uh, what is this here? 14-2 uh, utility water resistant wire. Um, there's a couple different wire options. There, there's wire that's specifically meant for uh, submersible like um, uh, sump pumps, but I think this is gonna work just fine. Uh, what I did here was I have two waterproof butt splice connectors connecting the two wires in this cable to the two wires of the bilge pump and so they're crimped down and then I have uh, two different size shrink wraps heat shrink wrap uh, tubes over that to get the two different sizes of wires nice and tight and then I used a brush on electrical tape I did a few uh, coats of that and that is producing a waterproof seal um, and then I have this three-quarter inside dimension braided hose with a, with a hose clamp here connected to the submersible. And that's going to come up through the observation tube, out this hole, and then that's going to actually hit the recirc line, which is this one 
half inch pex right here. It's going to go all the way down to the reception cell down there. And the wiring is going to go up into this box where I have a switch for the, uh, for the uh, uh, gray water pump going to the toilet. And I'm also going to have this timer here, which is going to be used to turn on the research pump. Currently I'm using a 60 minute timer, so it's going to run for 60 minutes. Uh, probably in the future I'll get something that uh, runs more automated and for longer periods of time when it's sunny. Um, okay, so I'm going to drop this guy down in this tube. Oh. So I'm going to take off this label. Okay. my hose out the hole I drilled. I drilled an inch and a half in, an inch and a half hole inside of the observation tube. I'm also going to run my utility wire through that same hole. So now I'm going to make my my, uh, my hose connections and my electrical connections in the box here where I already have DC power run and uh, then we'll be good to go. And now to test the Gray water, um, the gray water pump, the submersible that primes the pump that pumps water through that filter and then over into the toilet through through that guy right there. I got that I got that uh, valve on it just in case we need to maintenance and that goes all the way back into this wall and all the way back, all the way to the toilet. Okay, so this is an on and off situation. There's a pressure switch on this pump and it's set to really sensitive so that when the valve opens on the toilet to let more water in, this thing will sense a drop in pressure and kick on. And as soon as it closes, it'll the valve on the toilet, as soon as that closes, it stops filling uh, with, that, with that floating flange or whatever, it will shut off again. Whoa! hell. <laughs>